So they say the World Cup is where the best players in the world strut their stuff. Is that right, is it? Let's take a look at every World Cup team this summer and their respective players which have flopped in the Premier League. Russia, Yuri Zerkov. Kicking off this list is Russia's Yuri Zerkov. The 34-year-old Zena St. Petersburg left-back has played 76 times for his country, but I can't help but feel he was bought by Chelsea nine years ago purely because of his nationality. 19 league games across two seasons, zero goals. Zerkov was an absolute waste of time. 18 million pounds for that. Come on now, the most expensive Russian player of all time. Come on. Egypt, Ali Gaber. All right, so Egypt might be bringing arguably the Premier League's best player to the World Cup. To show the complete contrast throughout the rest of the squad, they're also bringing one of the Premier League's worst. Ali Gaber has played just once for West Brom this season and is a name that will be forgotten about within six weeks of the season ending. Saudi Arabia. Er, right, this is awkward. Okay, Saudi Arabians don't play in the Premier League, so... Moving on, Uruguay, Gaston Ramirez. Luis Suarez and Edison Cavani have to share a dressing room with two players who were relegated with Middlesbrough last summer. Isn't international football great? Gaston Ramirez, the mercurial Sampdoria playmaker, first flopped to Southampton before getting relegated with Hull and then Middlesbrough. Which begs the question, why did English clubs keep hiring him? Morocco, Manuel da Costa. Only West Ham fans will remember this fella, mainly because he spent his two years at Upton Park playing like his shoelaces were tied together. The centre half was bought in 2009, the club were relegated within a year. He only made 16 appearances for them before Sam Allardyce presumably ordered for him to be chucked off a cliff. Amazingly, it's 2018 and this absolute joke of a defender is still going to a World Cup. Iran, Ashkan Dijaga. Another obscure Premier League footballer, Ashkan Dijaga will be preparing to face Cristiano Ronaldo this summer, despite warming the bench for Nottingham Forest for a living. Five years ago, he had a crack at the Premier League with Fulham, did not go well and the winger was sent tumbling into the Championship. Portugal, Ricardo Quaresma. You have to hand it to Ricardo Quaresma to still be in that Portugal squad at 34 years of age. He is clinging onto that spot with everything he has. Always viewed as the more talented one when he and Ronaldo were at Sporting Lisbon together. It didn't quite pan out for Quaresma whenever he tried to do anything outside of Portugal. Case in point when he rocked up with Stamford Bridge in 2009 on loan. Whereas Ronaldo became a Premier League legend, this lad stumbled onto the pitch four times like a wandering drunkard who was searching for his way back to the pub. Spain, Diego Aspas. Diego Aspas is one of Europe's deadliest finishers and is a strong contender to lead the line for Spain at the World Cup. Tell that to a Liverpool fan five years ago and they'd have spluttered their bowl of cereal all over their stolen TV. At Liverpool he was about as much use as a broken dishwasher. 14 goalless appearances, the poor lad couldn't even take a corner properly. Since moving back to Spain, Brandon Rodgers probably dumped him on Celta Vigo's front porch and ran away, he scored 61 goals and 4 in 8 for Spain, including a winner against England. I'd say he's worked in his corners too. France, Paul Pogba. Ha, <laughs> no, just kidding, don't worry, Steve Mandanda. Yes, Pogba and Anthony Martial aren't exactly ripping the Premier League apart right now, but I'm not clinically insane. Steve Mandanda is the only flop here. Not sure how he only played nine times for Crystal Palace last season. Palace have had to go a whole season with a couple of wet yogurts between the sticks, while Mandanda could end the season with a Europa League and a ticket to Russia. Australia, Brad Jones. Speaking of goalkeeping flops, Brad Jones, good lord. I shouldn't be too hard on him. He did take in four appearances at Irish side Shelburne back in 2001. That club have practically slid off a cliff over the last 10 years, maybe it was because they didn't have their demigod Brad Jones to save them. Said no team ever. A non-entity with both Middlesbrough and Liverpool, Jones will be going to Russia with Australia this summer. Not as a starter though, thank Christ. Argentina, Angel Di Maria. Arguably the best player on this list, but hey, Angel Di Maria still flopped at Man United. The £59 million signing was a statement of intent back in 2014. Hey look, we can still buy world class talent, even if we practically finish mid-table. Who knows, if he didn't have a bunch of lads trying to rob his TV, maybe things would have worked out better in Manchester. Iceland, Oliver Ingi Skulason. If you needed a reminder about just how embarrassing England's defeat to Iceland was, it was demonstrated by how hardly any of them have ever played in the Premier League. I'll go for Oliver Ingi Skulason, not to be confused with Ari Freider Skulason. Come on now, let's not go mad. Skulason, the first one, spent four years between 2001 and 2005 sitting around cutting his toenails in the Arsenal reserves. Peru, Andre Carrillo. Benfica forward Andre Carrillo will be at the World Cup this summer. He scored one goal in 19 games for Watford on loan. Not great. Denmark, Nicholas Bentner. Who else but Nicholas Bentner? When an international team who still play this hunk of junk up front batter you 5-1 in a World Cup playoff, that's when you know you have defenders made of cheese. To be fair, Bentner has good international pedigree with 30 goals. Wasn't great for Arsenal or Sunderland though. Croatia, Andre Kramaric. Well, let's Leicester signed Andrei Kramaric in January 2015 for £9 million. He was supposed to be the superstar forward to save the club from relegation. He did nothing of the sort. He just limply watched as his teammates did the hard work before being disposed of 
for that title winning campaign. Well, the Hoffenheim forward is off to the World Cup with Croatia. Nigeria, Ahmed Musa. Speaking of Leicester flops, here's another. Ahmed Musa, a club record £16 million signing, arrived after the title win. He's done absolutely nothing. Two goals last season, no games this season. Not sure how he's managed to cling on to his Nigeria spot. Then again, this is the same country that will be bringing Odio Nagallo, a man who can only score against the Chinese. Costa Rica, Brian Ruiz. One of Costa Rica's best ever players, Brian Ruiz flattered to deceive a Fulham. Arriving in August 2011, the attacking talent found English defences tough to break down and was relegated within three years. Serbia, Matija Nastasic. Matija Nastasic is just one in a long list of failed Manchester City centre-backs. They have wasted so much money in that position over the last decade. Arriving in 2012 for €24 million, Euro, he made 34 appearances across two seasons before getting bundled out the door in 2014. The Schalke centre-back is still a Serbian international though. Germany, Jerome Bowen. Did someone mention failed Man City centre-backs? The hierarchy at City must still kick themselves about this one. Letting Jerome Boateng go after 16 games 8 years ago, it was madness. Absolute insanity. In what world was Julian Lescott, a man whose forehead looks like a spaceship, a better option than Boateng, who has gone on to become one of the world's best centre-halves? Mexico, Carlos Vea. Carlos Vea has always done the business for Mexico and should go to the World Cup despite diving headfirst into the baby league that is the MLS. He had two cracks of the whip in England with Arsenal West Brom, 5 goals and 37 league games. Brazil, Paulinho. When Paulinho was at Tottenham, the £17 million midfielder looked like he'd chosen the wrong profession. The club couldn't get rid of him quick enough, spitting him out to China two years later. Who would have thought he'd come back, sign for Barcelona for £40 million and be starting for Brazil at the World Cup? Madness. Switzerland, Johan Droro. Switzerland have a habit of producing Premier League rejects who do well at international level. Like Philippe Senderos, Johan Giroud was laughed out of Arsenal. Sweden, John Guidetti. It's crazy to think John Guidetti is still only 26 years old. He is probably praying to Christ every single day that Zlatan Ibrahimovic stays internationally retired or suddenly his summer plans are going to open up in a very big way. His Premier League CV reads no goals in six games for Man City and Stoke. He's a striker. South Korea, Ji Dong Won. If Ji Dong Won goes to the 2018 World Cup, Sunderland fans will have proof that life is categorically unfair. While at Sunderland, G looks like some local student who'd been dragged in off the street. Such was his lack of technical ability and ball control. He did make Martin Tyler nearly break his voice box, but then again that man probably screams with delight whenever he ties his shoelaces the first time of asking. Belgium, Dedrick Boyata. The Belgium squad is bristling with talent. It's all so bristling with Dedrick Boyata. 13 shoddy appearances for Man City as a shaky centre half and 14 in a relegation season for Bolton. Just make sure he doesn't get on the pitch and you'll be doing alright. Tunisia, Wabi Kazri. Again, another Sunderland flap of the World Cup. It's getting ridiculous now. Ask Sunderland fans and they will tell you what they think of Wabi Kazri. It's not pretty. The Tunisian winger is doing well at running though, with 11 goals this season. Panama, not applicable. Sorry Panama, but you know yourself, you have no Premier League flops because you have no lads who played in the Premier League. Prove me wrong, Panamanian audience. Prove me wrong. England, Jake Livermore. Okay, this one is almost as impossible as Panama. You don't pick people for England if they haven't done anything in the Premier League, especially considering English players are too terrified to step foot outside their own country and play football abroad. Let's just say Jake Livermore. I mean, if he goes, he'll be at a World Cup despite being relegated twice in his last three top flight seasons. Colombia, Radamel Falcao. One of the world's most prolific finishers, Radamel Falcao crumbled in England. The Monaco forward borrowed the finishing prowess of David Bellion to score Score 5 in 36 games for both Man United and Chelsea. Back to his best now though, 54 in his last 2 seasons for Monaco and looking to make up for lost time having missed the last World Cup through injury. Japan, Shinji Kagawa. Ruined by David Moyes. Shinji Kagawa was absolutely destroyed by David Moyes at Manchester United. Nowadays he's arguably Japan's best player and is strutting his stuff for Borussia Dortmund. I don't know what Man United were playing at when they didn't bother to give him a go. Why did they even sign him in the first place? It makes absolutely no sense. But rest assured, Kagawa is a very talented player. Poland, Grzegorz Krakowkiak. When West Brom nabbed Grzegorz Krakowkiak on loan last summer, it was up there with Renato Sanchez de Swansea as one of the more bizarre deals. It turned out to be as bad as that too. A man who cost PSG £22 million two years ago is now sleepwalking his way into the championship after some pretty awful displays. Senegal, Papi Gilabaji. Another Sunderland reject. Christ, why not just put Adnan Yanezai in too? He should have just declared for Kosovo. Yes, Papi Gilabaji might have spent last season playing for Sunderland like a man with four separate hangovers, but the Dijon Loney will somehow still be going to Russia before returning to take on Accrington Stanley next season. Maybe. So there we go, that is the list of Premier League flops that are going to feature at the World Cup this summer. What do you think? Have I got this completely wrong? Who would you have included? Any names I've left out? Are the Panama and Saudi Arabia fans going to absolutely kill me in the comment section below? Most likely yes. Anyway, cheers for watching lads. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.